So, welcome back to Real Board Reviews. We are going over a, a legendary player. We are going over Cho Chikun versus Takao Shinji. Now, Takao Shinji is not bad. He's been around for a while. And he is a pretty strong player in good old Japan's. Cho Chikun, however, is an absolute god-tier legendary player who actually, believe it or not, still, still puts up some good games. You might not, uh, might not know that, might not know that, but you can't get rid of this old man. Not only will he beat you to death, but then he'll steal your tea while he's doing it too. So you gotta watch out for him. You gotta watch out for him. And to give you an idea, like, Takao Shinji is someone who, like, is playing for titles and whatnot. So this is not a slouch of a player that's going up against. All right. So we have good old uh, Chochikun starting off with black this game. With Mr. Takao Shinji going and denying, at the very least, a diagonal play from the opponent. Interesting. Got double four four points from good old Cho Chikun. And a three four four from our white player. Black approach is high as per usual, and instantly we are treated to something truly interesting. You think you know where this is going, and you are wrong. Black drops down. And offers up an avalanche. Offers up an avalanche in 2023. Okay, okay. Could Hane here for the small. Decides to back off for potentially a large. But then, Cho throws us again for a seriously old school variation where he's just going to Atari for the influence and give up the territory. It's a nice, thick position that you do not see nowadays. So right away... I'm on board. What else are we gonna see? Yeah, you don't see this anymore, do ya? Everyone's like all aboard the AI train and going, okay, it's the territory that rules the day now, not influence, so trading a territory for the end? Like, oh, would you, would you do that? I don't know. Now, clearly, this is obviously a mistake because he's not 3 3 right now. But okay, okay, okay. White approaches. Black backs off high because he's clearly playing for influence right now. <laughs> and then, oh, Mr. Takao Shinji, you made... like Okay, so one thing that you should always remember. Think about any game that is like your favorite pro game to go over. And remember, very importantly, that game could never have been gone over, that could never have been played without the other player. Cho Chikun's great, but the fact that on this board, Mr. Shinji over here is like, I'm 3 3 in this fool. It's like, oh, now we're off to the races. It's like, okay. Okay, okay, okay. We're going into the 3-3. Three, three. Interesting idea. Let's see how Cho Chikun handles the 3-3 three, three nowadays. Blocks to a wide, thick side. And we extend. Offering up a variation that White's just like, yeah, we're not flying knifing. We're going to go ahead and extend, and extend, and Hane. 
Black is chilling and just taking the influence. Black is chilling and just taking the influence. All right. Mr. Takao Shinji. You decided against Cho Chikun to feed him a bunch of influence. You must have a very interesting way in dealing with this. You know where the move is, chat. Where is it? To say it. Where's White's next move? You know it. You all know it. In the olden days, White would get smacked across the wrist by a cane. I know, right? Maybe he still should be. Come on, old man. Show us your fighting skills. Right? It's like, okay. Now, the fact that this was played tells you who won the game, right? There's no way. I mean, you know me. If you know me, you know who won this game. It's not a spoiler, okay? The fact that you saw this played, and I am who I am, spoiled the ending of this game. Let's be real about that right now. But how is he going to handle the game? That is interesting. Yeah, V can't win now. He stole the corner and then White got the star point. How are you going to win now, man? How are you going to win? Now, I like Black's approach to this because as I always tell you, White has committed, whether they like it or not, to be in a low territorial count game because the territory that they obtained over there is not very much. The territory they have over here, not very much. You put not very much with not very much, and you got a little bit of a snoozer. So Black's like, points. I'm taking points. Extend? Okay. Don't care. Thank you for your continued patronage to my influence. I'll be using it to beat you to death. How do you reduce? Now remember, these are some of Japan's strongest players. How do you reduce? It's not going to be, yeah, I'm going to play her now. Yeah, we're going to play over her. I got, I got two spice extension, so I beat the game now. Like, we're not doing that. Like, just real quick, you could even imagine something as simple as this one, and now you're in trouble again, aren't you? Because now you have to get in over here as fast as you can. But that means you left these little guys behind, and you didn't defend them. So you have to be careful about playing games like this, because it's not how you want to follow up. That's kind of how you get into this game of whack-a-mole where you're constantly under attack and constantly having to play something else to reduce somewhere else because they just keep building off the new weak thing that you made. Which is why White doesn't want to go out like that. So he attaches. And Black's like, okay, I'll take those points, thank you. One thing you are never doing in this game is getting rid of this corner from me. Are you going to defend that? Well, it's like, no. I am playing over here now. There you go. There you go. This is now the board position. He's trying to reduce really fast and get actual points because again this is not a lot this is not a lot and the this is just a base so he wants actual points he can build off of okay 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 that makes that makes sense that makes sense black's like i'm gonna make sure this can't get a base perfectly blocked a two space extension white defends Tax that too. Like I mentioned, this is just going to be a base. 
why didn't he force at P16? Um, you'll tab on over and find out what P16 even is. Um, oh, the Atari? I mean, it's not going anywhere. You could. You could, but he'd probably still play exactly this move. Because, I mean, White could play it literally right now, right? It's just he felt that it's uh, probably odd to catch. He didn't need to play right now. So right now, here's an expectation that I had. I expected Black, being who he is, to find a way to absolutely pop off with his influence. But what's interesting here is Chochikun understands the position that White is in. And he's not getting too aggressive as a result. In games like this, white has to choose how they're going to get territory. So black is just going to make sure that they've got their points. Because if they do that, they're, in, they're still in a good position. So it plays there. Tari out. Connect and yoink into yoink. There's now a cutting point open. Extend into extend. Those two stones are absolutely dead. But there's a cutting point there. Trying to play light. Connect everything up in defense simultaneously. Unfortunately, that's trying to do way too much. It's easy to fall for it, however. Like, if we're not careful, and this gets to be thickness, then black has been completely run over. So you can't back off here and just be like, I'm gonna just live now. Because you're giving all of this a chance to solidify. And then the width, the middle just goes to black or to, to white, right? So it's important to find the shape points and counterattack. Right now we've got cutting points and cutting points. White's like, okay, I need to attack this because there are problems here. Defending shapey, shapey, shapes. Shapey, shapey. Defending the sheepy. And we're going to extend. And threaten to honey the head of two and three stones. Because that is really nice. White's like, I will not let you attack my stones. And Black's just like, I know my proverbs. Get wrecked, nerd. It's like, all right, gotta defend that. And we defend. Forcing moves first. Just like the Choi Jong game, we're playing forcing moves first. Always remember your forcing moves first, chat. Now that we are headed back towards this way, we do the Atiari into the lovely little connector. And then hide the head of two and three stones again. That's a glass stone. Now you can't unsee it. Extends. Now there's cutting points here. So we're going to make sure that we're nice and solid. And that was black. All nice and fine. Tries to get in. Oh. Uh, some kind of an attack. This one's nice because it threatens to simply connect up or Atari on out and surround. A surround on the bottom would mean dead bottom. Don't want yourself a dead bottom. That's hard to explain to the police. Honey. Make sure we're nice and connected up. Black strengthens their shape. Or white does, sorry. 
creating a carding point. Yeah, it's good old pokey poke. I think that's connected immediately, right? Yeah, okay, good. And connection, falling back into solid shape. Poking at some shape. And that is the shape that we've got for white now. Because there's no eye here for white. It's only this one point right now. Okay, that's interesting. Now here is a test for every player. Next move. For black. Let's see where your noggins are, chat. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Where are the big moves? Are you looking at large points? Are you trying to be greedy? Are you trying to be aggressive? Are you trying to be too greedy, too aggressive? Like when you go through pro games and you notice someone has sente like this, this is where you want to test to see if you can still get the right move. Because a lot of improving at Go, especially at Q level, is just making sure you're in the right area of, one, knowing exactly when you have Sente, and making sure that Sente is in the right place. You know? Like, if you didn't know you had Sente here, that's big, because that means that you might think that this isn't alive yet, in which case you need to be made aware of, you know, you've got this, you've got this, you've got this, you're still out. So you shouldn't need to feel like you have to defend here, if, you, if, that, if that's what you were thinking. Or, um, I don't know, anything like that. So one person did get it right, and One-Eyed Dragon, congratulations. I kind of hinted at it when I pointed out that this group here only has the one eye right there right now. So one thing that you wouldn't want to do is envision this group being surrounded because that would be a murder scene. Yeah, that's how things get killed. And, 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 remember, we could play here, forcing, we can play here, forcing, no eyes here. So the eyes here are questionable too, right? So this isn't alive, this isn't alive, which makes that cutting point something DDKs and SDKs and whatnot really need to work on. Which cutting points are important? Ooh, this little duder is the star of the show. How do you say between L10 and K10? Um, if, okay, so a lot of it's about follow-ups, right? If we play here, that extension there is just an obvious follow-up. Most obvious one in the history of ever, and it's severe like a mother. If we play here, and white defends, where is the next follow-up? Hmm, it looks like we're going this way anyway, right? Only now we seem to be fighting from behind. So if we play this one, and I think, yes, white plays here as we expect. Well, an interesting occurs because, remember, as we lean against this group, which is, you know, like one eye right now, we're kind of getting stronger and stronger into threatening a surround. So we're leaning on this one to surround the other one. Yeah, you always have to decide which one you're leaning on because the one that you're leaning on isn't the one you're actually attacking. Right? You're always, on, always leaning on one thing to attack something else or to do something else. Like fundamentally... That's the purpose of like shoulder hitting a third line stone to reduce, right? It's not because we want to attack the stone that we're shoulder hitting and leaning on. Like, no, nah, not, not, not that's not what we're doing. We're just reducing something else. We're just using it for our own purposes. You know, kind of like that person that you can't forget about. 
Anyway. So we go ahead and Tiger Mouth. Because we're threatening that surround. Now, this is hard because a push into a cut works. So we have to defend. And Cho has got to be giggling to himself now. This is working out so well for him. Because this extra strength here, oh, so nice. And you might think to yourself, what? Well, wait. Black defended themselves. There's no attack anymore. Not true. Where there is Aji, there is a way. Forcing move. It's threatening something like this into like a tiger mouth to destroy all of the eye shape. Interesting probe. Note the hard connection rather than like dropping down here because the threat to cut through here is very real. That was really creepy because that stone was actually really, really cold and I don't know why. Like the temperature of that stone in my hand was like so freaking cold. It felt like ice. I don't know how. It doesn't make any sense. That was really weird. But okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna ignore that right now. It's fine. Forcing move. Uh, extending. Yeah, it's cool. The ghosts are just uh they're they're just chilling. They wanna they wanna see how this game ends. They're all curious too. Yucky moves, but hey, yucky moves sometimes work. Defend. 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 And now this one might seem like paranoia to a lot of people, but you can Atari into like Atari and then you're kind of running into an issue because that's going to be a forcing move and then that's going to be a forcing move and it's just not it's just not looking too great it's just not looking too great so we do this one got the good old capture now that's alive so we poke white tries to keep some shape But that allows the poke into the cut. Once an attack starts going, man. Oh. Tari. Once those attacks start going, they don't stop, do they? I like this how it threatens to surround without playing the turn, which would go into a Hane, and then maybe Hane into an extend, which then threatens to surround uh, these stones. I likey this a lot. 10 out of 10. Would play again. So we've got the attachment into the Hane. Now, unfortunately, in this game, even though you can still see good old Cho Chikun, you know, barreling along, attacking his opponents, making points, he made points here, he's making a couple of points here, a few in there. Doesn't seem like his attacks are really landing. Like, he's, he's, he's got that aggression, but it's hard to see where he's going to land, you know? Until the next move. What's the next move? Let's see how many of y'all 
are killers. Who's got a war face? Who can? Who's got it? Who's got the war face? Got two for F10. What's F10? Ah, the pokey pokey poke. You're looking at the shape. Uh, very nice. Alternatively, we are going to go to the school of Cobra Kai and sweep the leg. Not quite a 3-3, but it still hurts. Like, if you 3-3, it's going to play there, and then there's there, and then they're going to make shape. This is a pain in the butt to play against when there's a huge friggin' wall right there. Because if you play the 3-3 and they follow, you know that there's bad Aji in there still. So White's like, okay, what do we do? I got to surround. Like, so, so, look, if we play this, you've got this. Into here. Into here. Into what? Into this or something? That ain't looking great. That ain't looking so great, right? That's looking a little bit, uh... Hmm. So, good old Shinji over here gets into his Evangelion again and starts going on the attack. You can picture him screaming at this point. And the Ah, the moves are so simple. It's gonna go and play here. Red alert. Spends. All right, there goes the corner completely, and there are cutting points. That's a problem. We need to protect the cutting point. This is all the shape that White's got now. Pokes to try to live. But now we have the other problem. If we run this out, we're surrounding the middle group. If we surround the middle group... Yeah, it might not be alive. Or at the very least, it's going to get cut to pieces. So, White turns instead. Which causes black to turn. And drop down. Rip all of the rest of the shape off. It's like, bye-bye the rest of whatever you thought this was. If you don't mind me, I'm just going to connect now. Connects up. Drops down. And that is a great place to resign. Ooh, Cho Chi Kun done murdered you, Mr. Shinji. What do you know about that? That is a harsh ending. We had the 3-3. Three, three. Dealing with influence, somehow it spawned in two different groups that had to live. He kept splitting them, applied pressure, and it just went from attack over here to attack over here, and finally the attack over here, which just knocked him out of the game. Like, the strength from this wall, it just kept shifting, you know? That's why you've got to be careful with influence and this is one of this is like what white is like japan's what third or fourth player in country he is not a pushover but cho yeah cho still got it that old man still got it you don't mess with cho chagun uh he set up an influential game, and he's like, I dare you to 3-3 three, three me, and then Shinji did. And then at that point, he just regretted all of his life choices for the rest of the game. Uh, either way, completely crazy. Absolutely nuts. Uh, regretfully, 
It is not the craziest game I'm going over tonight. That one's coming up. That one's coming up now. <laughs>